إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور عنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل لا ومن يضلل فلا هادي لا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وشر العمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد Then today, inshallah, in this short session that we have before us, it is a reminder and an encouragement for our sisters with regard to holding to the haqq, holding to the sunnah, holding to the way of the salaf al-salih, holding to the way of the earlier generations of al-Islam and not straying away from that. We find, my sisters, year after year, and nearly, you know, we are close to two and a half decades, if not close to three decades, since this Dawah to Salafiyyah has become established in this land. And even in our efforts in the Dawah over the last 20 to 25 years, we have found year in and year out the way that some of our sisters, even though it is not exclusive, to, our, to the women folk, how they approach the aspect of Salafiyya. And it is true to say that with some of our sisters, and it is unfortunate, that if they are in an association and in company of women who are upon the truth and upon Salafiyya, then they will remain upon the truth and they will remain upon Salafiyya. If they marry a man who is Salafi upon the way of the people of Sunnah, upon the way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, then for so long as they are married to him, they will remain with him upon the truth. If they depart from him for whatever reason, then they will leave the truth and follow the religion of the next man that they marry. Or, if they remain with the man who is upon the sunnah, and if he goes astray, they go astray with him. So if he is tabligi, the wife is tabligi. If he is salafi, the wife is salafi. If he is hanafi, the wife becomes hanafi. If he becomes ikhwani, the wife becomes ikhwani. This is not the way of the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The way of the sunnah of Allah's messenger and rather the sunan and the sunnah of the rusul and the anbiya that came before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that they would hold on to the truth regardless. Look at the case with Asiya radiallahu anha, the wife of Fir'aun, that she took the da'wah from Musa alayhi salam. And she entered into Islam wholeheartedly. Worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as she was commanded to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless of whether her husband was the most tyrannical, the most despicable, the most arrogant man that was walking upon the earth at that time. Regardless of that, she held on to the truth. Even when he tortured her and he beat her, and he threatened her with death and eventually killed her. She remained upon the truth. When he laid her out in the open sun and she drove stakes and nails into her shoulders, into her arms and into her legs and he left her out in the heat of the baking sun bleeding. All she did was that she said, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord, make for me a house in Jannah with yourself. Make me for a house in Jannah, close to you. And protect me and save me from Fir'aun. This is the way of the righteous woman. 
and the believing woman. The believing woman holds on to the truth irregardless of what is happening around her. She takes her example from the righteous women of the Salaf and the righteous women throughout the history of mankind. Through times of difficulty and oppression and transgression that they hold on to the truth because they know that the haqq and the truth is the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the way of the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum. They recognize the fact that when, the Mas- when Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, Khatta lana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khatta. That the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he drew for us a line. And he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, هذا سبيل الله, this is the path of Allah. Then he drew lines to the right and he drew lines to the left and he said, and he said, هذه سبل المتفرقة. Ala kulli sabil in shaytan yad'u ilay. Upon the head of each one of those other lines, these divergent paths, there is a devil at the head of each one of them calling to it. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the words of Allah. وَأَنَّ هَذَا سِرَاتِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ And this is my straight path, so follow it. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبَلْ And do not follow the other paths. فَاتَّفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ For indeed they will separate you away from Allah's straight path. The path of the haqq and the path of truth and the path of sunnah is one. Upon you, my sisters, to hold on to it. For if you were to hold on to it, my sisters, irregardless of what is happening, irregardless of what your husband is upon, or what your friends are upon, or what your family is upon, or what society is upon, that is the path to Jannah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا That those who say that our Lord is Allah, then they remain steadfast, upright. تَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Upon them descend the angels at the time of death. أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Do not fear and do not grieve. وَأَبْشِرُوا, بِ... وأبشروا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ And receive glad tidings of Jannah. That Jannah that you have been promised. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا And we the angels have been your friends in the life of this world. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ And likewise in the hereafter. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ And in Jannah you shall receive that which your inner self desires. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ And in that Jannah you will get whatever you ask for. For whom? whom for whom does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise to all of this? For those who believe in Allah then they are steadfast having istiqama. What do we mean by istiqama? What do we mean that they are steadfast and upright? It means that they follow the sirat al-mustaqim. Mus- the, the they follow that straight path. The sirat al-mustaqim. That path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon the righteous and the pious. That Allah has blessed them to follow that path. Those individuals are the ones who are like the likes of the wife of Fir'aun. The one who was tortured. The one who was beaten. The one who had iron nails driven through her arms and through her legs. And when she was looking into the sky, and she said, Oh Allah, make for me a house in Jannah with yourself and protect me from Fir'aun. Then the angels, they came to her and they shaded her with, her, with their wings. And they pointed and they opened, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up the heavens so that she could see through the heavens that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had built for her a house. Built for her a house in Jannah. This is the istiqama. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not tried us. Walillahi alhamd. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not tried us with what he tried her with. Radiallahu anha. Allah did not try us with what he tried her with. Yet we fall short. Or some of our women folk, they fall short with trials that are minuscule compared to what she went through. So where is your istiqama? Where is your steadfastness, my sisters? Where is that fulfillment of that ayah? That upon them the angels descend. When do the angels descend? The angels descend at the point of death. Upon whom? Upon these individuals. Those who say that our Lord is Allah, like the wife of Fir'aun. My Lord is Allah. She knew that her Lord is Allah, even though her husband was saying, Ana rabbukumul a'la. I am your Lord the Most High. She said, no. Inna al-lazina qalu rabbuna Allah, our Lord is Allah. He is the one that we worship. He is the one that we obey. He is the one that we are submissive to. He is the one that we humble ourselves before. He is the one that we prostrate to. He is the one that we obey. He is the one that we do not transgress against his, against his rights. ثُمَّ استقاموا. This is the meaning of istiqama. That thereafter you remain strong, firm, like a mountain pegged into the earth. Earthquakes will come and go, but the mountain will remain standing. Tornadoes, wind and rain and snow will come. Everything will come, but that mountain will remain steadfast. Upon them, the angels, when they descend at the point of death, and the person is in a state of fear, and the pangs of death are upon them. As the Prophet ﷺ said, La ilaha illallah. Indeed, death is painful. Death is painful. It is a time when they fear. What have I put forth? What is going to happen? What am I leaving behind? When the wife, when the woman, she says to herself, my children, my husband, my family, all of this I'm leaving behind. So she has this, this hazina or this sadness and she fears, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen in my grave? How am I going to answer? What good deeds have I done? Have I done enough? What do the angels they say? The angels say, Allah ta'khafu. They say, do not fear. The angels they inform her, do not fear. Wala tahzanu. And do not, do not be sad. Do not fear. For indeed, as the ulama, they have said in the tafsir of this ayah, do not fear. For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for you an abode of Jannah because of the good that you did in this earth. And do not grieve, do not grieve for that which you have left behind. For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of your children and your family and that which you have left behind. Istiqama. Look at the fruit of istiqama, the fruits of istiqama. Remaining steadfast. Like the Prophet said. Hold on to the sunnah with your mawla teeth. This is what is required, especially in the times that we live. Following the way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. That they were tried with punishment. When the mushrikeen used to punish them and torture them and kill them. And starve them. And boycott them. Look what they did to Sumayya radiallahu anha. When likewise, they put her out in the open desert. A thousand or more years after Musa alayhi salam. What Fir'aun did to, what, what Fir'aun did to his wife. Then in the time of Sumayya the mushrikeen. Similarly they took Sumayya radiallahu anha. The first martyr in Islam. When they took her out, those mushrikeen out into the open desert. Why? Because she was poor, miskina. 
no tribe to look after her, no one to protect her, except for her immediate family, and they were weak. And they were weak. So they took her out into the open desert, and they beat her. And they made her burn in under, the, under the heat of the sun of the desert. Yet she would not abandon her deen. She would not leave off her religion. She would not concede to what they commanded her to do. And they got so frustrated with her. That they heated up a spear. And they forced it into her abdomen. Up until she died. Radiallahu anha. Istiqama. Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not put you through those trials. Yet, in the ease that Allah has given us, in the ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, He has shown you the truth. He has shown you the straight path. He has shown you the way of the Prophet. He has shown you Salafiya. He has guided you towards the ulama. He has shown you the jama'ah. Meaning the people of truth he has shown you. Yet still you are finding it hard. Yet still you resist. Yet still you try to get away. Like the Prophet wasallam said. That my similitude is like the similitude of a man. Who has built a fire. Who has kindled a fire. And then the moths and the insects they head towards the fire. Just like the moth in the light. When the moth heads towards the light. So when you light, when the Prophet ﷺ said that my similitude is like the one who has, lit, who has kindled a fire. And then all of the moths, they head towards the light of the fire, destroying themselves in the fire. So I am trying to hold you back by pulling you from your waist, by pulling you away from the fire, but you are getting the better of me. But you are getting the better of me. Allah has shown you the truth, my sisters. Allah has shown you the way of the Messenger of Allah. Has shown you the way of the Sunnah. Has informed you that if you have istiqamah and you believe in Allah and you worship Allah and you obey Allah, then you have nothing to fear. Allah will give you the glad tidings and those angels will come. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ And they will come to you when you are dying. They will come to you when your soul is leaving your body. They will come to you in that time of fear and grief and sadness. And the angels will say to you, وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَدُونَ Receive the glad tidings of Jannah. The Jannah that you have been promised. Why? Because you are good, my sisters. Because you follow the Sunnah. You do not follow the desires of other people. You do not follow their whims and their practices and their culture and their customs. You weren't deceived by the life of this world. You weren't deceived by that, my sisters. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you this glad tiding at the time when you need comfort more than you've ever needed before. At that time when you need your Lord, when you know that there is nothing to protect you, Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah sends you those angels. Then the angels will descend upon that person at that time. Don't fear. Imagine receiving those words from the angels at that time of death. At that time. What would that do to the heart of the believer? And then not only that, the angels say, وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ And receive the glad tidings of Jannah. At that time when you are lonely, your family cannot help you. Your children cannot help you. Your wealth cannot help you. Your house and your property cannot help you. Your mother and father cannot help you. At that time of despair and grief and fear, the angels say, Abshiru bil Jannah. Receive glad tidings of Jannah. The Jannah that you have been promised. Why? Because you were righteous. You weren't involved in shirk. You didn't care about anything except the worship and the obedience to Allah. 
You followed the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You fled from bid'ah and the false practices of the Sufis and the Rafida. Then yawmul qiyamah, my sisters, imagine when you are naked, uncircumcised, on that day of terror and heat, on that day when there is no one to help you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then on that day, you see a lake, a reservoir, and you rush towards it because you are thirsty and you are suffering. And you know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam is standing by that reservoir, by that lake. On the side of the lake that you see vessels and jugs made out of gold and silver as they are numerous, as they are stars in the sky. So then you race towards that just like everybody else. Then you see people being pushed away. People who are in terror. People who don't know what's going on. Like moths that are scattered. And then the angels are driving them away, pushing them away. The messenger of Allah calls out. Ummati, ummati, my ummah, my ummah. The angels are then informing the messenger of Allah. Alayhi salatu wassalam. You do not know, O oh Muhammad, what they innovated. What bid'ah they did after you. And then you look towards yourself, your si- my sister. And you ask yourself, was I in bid'ah? Did I do bid'ah? Was I amongst them? Where was I? Was I with the people of sunnah? Was I with the people of bid'ah? Am I going to come close to Muhammad? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Am I going to be able to drink from the lake? Will he intercede for me on this day? So as the people are being pushed away, you are allowed to go through. You are in front of Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam. With the Nabi of Allah. Why? Because you are upon the sunnah. You lower your head and you drink from that lake, taking the vessel. You drink from that water that is pure, sweeter than honey, whiter than milk, and you never become thirsty again. You feel comfort because you were allowed through whilst millions were turned away. Oceans of people were turned away because of their innovations. Imam al-Qurtubi rahimahullahu ta'ala mentioned that those that will be prevented from the lake of Allah's messenger yawm al-qiyamah, they are the khawarij, they are the mu'tazila, they are the rafida. These are those people, the people of bid'a, the jahmiyyah and other than them. So now you understand why it is important, my sisters, to hold on tenaciously to the truth with your molar teeth. As the Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَنْ يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ سَيَرَى اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Whomsoever from amongst you lives for long will see a great amount of differing. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِمَا عَرَفْتُمْ مِنْ سُنَّتِي so binding upon you is my sunnah. Meaning binding upon you is my path, my way, my tariqah. Wa sunnati al-khulafa al-rashideen al-mahdiyeen min ba'di. And likewise the sunnah of the rightly guided successors after me, the khulafa al-rashideen. Addu alayha bin nawajid. And hold on to their way. Hold on to the sunnah. My sunnah. And the sunnah of my companions. Hold on to that. Bin Nawajid. Look at the choice of the words of our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who was inspired by Allah. Who never spoke from his desires. Hold on to it. With your molar teeth. Your jaws at the back of your mouth. When you hold on to something with your molar teeth. You don't let go. He didn't say the front teeth, he said the molar teeth. Hold on to it, my sisters, with dear life. Because at the time of death, it will benefit you. Yawm al-qiyamah, it will benefit you. Yawm al-qiyamah, it will gain you entry into Jannah. 
Not the way of the Sufis. Not the way of the grave worshippers. Not the way of Jumaat al-Tabliq. Not the way of Ikhwan al-Muslimin. Not the way of Hizb al-Tahrir. Not the way of these all of these groups of politics and bid'ah and misguidance. Not the way of the grave worshippers. Not the way of those who write the ta'weez for you. Not the way of those who wear amulets. Not the way of those who believe in good luck charms. Not the way of those who go out for 40 days upon their bid'ah. Not the way of those who build graves inside their masjid. Not the way of those who build mausoleums and domes over their graves. Not the way of those who plant flowers at the graves of their beloved. No. But the way of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the point of death. Then you'll be glad that you were upon the sunnah and salafiyyah. Don't be Salafi just merely because you are married to a Salafi. So that when he goes astray, you go astray. And if he is guided, you are guided. Sunnah. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ The first and foremost to believe from the Muhajirun and from the Ansar. Sahaba. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِيَحْسَانِ And then those who follow them precisely. Who have you been commanded to follow? Sahaba. They are the ones because they were the first and foremost. رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا Allah is pleased with them. And they are pleased with him. وَأَعَدَّ اللَّهُ وَ... وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَجْرِي تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised them. وَأَعَدَّ That Allah promised them. جَنَّاتٍ Gardens of Jannah, gardens of paradise. تَجْرِي تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Under which rivers flow. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا And they will remain therein forever. أَبَدًا Meaning ever, for an eternity, they will not come out. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ And that is the supreme success. Who are they, my sisters? They are those individuals, as Aisha رضي الله عنها said, قَالَتْ سَأَلَ رَجُلٌ النَّبِيَّ صلى الله عليه وسلم أَيُّ النَّاسِ Khairun, which of mankind are the best? The Prophet Sallallahu said, Al-Qarnu alladhi ana fihi. He said, the generation that I am living in. That is the best of mankind. Thumma thani. Then the second generation. Thumma thalith. Then the third generation. As in the hadith in Sahih Muslim. In a narration, the Prophet Sallallahu said, when they asked him, Ayyu nasin khairun. Which of mankind are the best? He said, Anna, I am the best. Walladina ma'i. And those who are with me, meaning in this generation. Thumma alladina ala al athar. And those who follow their athar, those who follow their path. Thumma alladina ala al athar. Then those who follow their path. This is our way, my sisters. This is the way of Abu Hanifa. This is the way of Imam Malik. This is the way of Imam Shafi'i. This is the way of Ahmad ibn Hanbal. This is why you find those beautiful, tremendous statements from those great imams. When Imam Abu Hanifa, he said, when a hadith is found to be sahih, that is my madhab. So what's the madhab of Abu Hanifa? The authentic hadith. As Ibn Abidin said, and collected from Abu Hanifa in his Al-Hashiyah. Ibn Abdul Bar. And likewise, Ibn Qayyim, they said, a narration that is authentic upon Abu Hanifa. Abu Hanifa said, it is not permitted for anyone to accept our view if they do not know where we got it from. Hadith. Don't follow our view unless you know where we got it from. This was the way of Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, the imam who died in the year 150 after the hijra. Likewise, Imam Malik ibn Anas, rahimahullah, who died in the year 179. 
He said, truly, I am a human being just like you. I make mistakes sometimes, and I'm correct sometimes. Therefore, look into my opinions. All that agrees with the book and the sunnah, then accept it. And all that does not agree with the book and the sunnah, then ignore it. Subhanallah. As Ibn Abdul Bar mentioned from him in Jami Bayan al-Ilm. This was the way of the Salaf of this Ummah. Imam Shafi'i, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He said, if you find, he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that they reach us, as well as some of them escaping from us. So whenever I voice my opinion, or I formulate a principle, which is country, and my view is something country, to that which is upon the sunnah of Allah's messenger, or the hadith of Allah's messenger, then the correct view is the sunnah. And if that is what the messenger was upon, then that is my view also. This is the way of the salaf of this ummah. Holding fast, sticking to the haqq, not swaying, not moving my sisters, not salafi by association, even though there is some haqq to that. That we keep companionship with the Salafis, with the people of Sunnah. This is, these are the people that we stick to. The people of Sunnah because the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-mar'u ala deeni khalili. That a man or a person is upon the religion of his close companion. So look to whom you take, your compa- look to whom you take as your companion. Who is it that you have taken as your companion, my sister? When you get married, you marry a man of sunnah and salafiyyah. It is not, it is not permissible. But it is haram to marry an innovator. Haram. Is that bold? What I've said, is that too bold? This is the sunnah of Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where do we extract it from? From the hadith of Allah's messenger. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, The curse of Allah is upon the innovator. So now you're going to marry someone who is cursed? Curse of Allah upon the innovator and upon the one who accommodates him, the one who protects him, the one who looks after him, the one who feeds him, the one who gives him wealth, the one who gives him an open platform to call the people to misguidance. The curse of Allah, the hadith in Bukhari, the curse of Allah upon the innovator and the one who accommodates the innovator. And the curse of the angel and the curse of mankind, Ajma'een. You're going to marry a man like this. And then you say, no problem, when I marry him, I'll bring him to the masjid. Then I'll bring him to the masjid. La! The Prophet wasallam he said, a woman, she is married for four reasons. For her beauty, for her lineage, for her wealth, or for her religion. Marry the one with the religion and you'll be successful. Which religion does the innovator have? The grave worshipper have? The braille we have? The naqshbandi have? The chisti have? The tablighi have? What religion does the tablighi have? Except a religion that is based upon hawa? Upon desires and whims and innovation and misguidance? And dreams? What religion do they have? What religion do the, do the naqshbandiya have? What religion do they have? A religion of calling upon the dead in their graves and dead animals? Is this their religion? You're going to marry a man like this? Don't worry, brother. I'll bring him to Sunnah. Prophet ﷺ said, marry the one upon the religion. Not marry the innovator and then bring him. Marry the one with the religion and you'll be successful. So the Sahaba used to go out seeking righteous women. The righteous women from the Sahaba. That they would marry righteous men. They would go to the messenger of Allah, seek his advice. Ya Rasulullah, such and such is proposed. Such and such is proposed. Such and such is proposed. Ya Rasulullah, advise me. Why? What do they want from the messenger of Allah? They want from him nasiha. They want to know from him who's the best of the... All of the Sahaba were excellent. But the women, they wanted the best of the Sahaba. My sisters, in our times we have no Sahaba. 
But we have people who try to emulate them. So why do you have to scrape the bottom of the barrel? When you, my sisters, you can reach. You can reach for the best of Ahlul Sunnah. For your daughters, for yourselves, for your sisters. Marry the one with the religion and you'll be successful. Oh, kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why you find those words of the Salaf of this Ummah, the likes of Ahmad ibn Hanbal. When he said, La tuqalliduni. Don't blindly follow me. Wala shafi'i. And likewise, don't blindly follow shafi'i. Wala athawri, wala awza'i. And don't blindly follow authority nor awza'i, but rather take from where they took. This is what puts that love in our hearts for those scholars. Because those scholars were not in it for themselves, for their own authority or, or leadership or status or fame or shuhra. They call to the deen of Allah sincerely, truthfully. Where are those people in our times in the West? You don't find them. Except a handful. Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has still preserved ulama in the dunya today. The likes of Shaykh Al-Fawzan. The likes of Al-Luhidan. The likes of Shaykh Zayd Al-Madkhali. Rabi bin Hadi. Ubaid Al-Jabari. Muhammad ibn Hadi. Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved for us scholars. Those scholars that are considered in our eyes to be the jama'ah. As Abdullah ibn Mubarak said when he was asked the question, Abdullah ibn Mubarak who died in the year 181 after the Hijrah, some of the people they came to him and they said to him, Manil Jama'a. Who is the Jama'a? Meaning who are the people of truth in our times? Who are the people of truth? This is within a hundred years of the death of the Prophet wasallam, Or the death of the, of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Within a hundred, hundred years of the death of the Prophet Sallallahu they are asking Abdullah ibn Mubarak, who are the people of truth? Who is the jama'ah? Manil jama'a? What did he say? He said, Abu Bakr and Umar. They are the jama'a. So the people said, Qad ma'at Abu Bakr and Umar. Abu Bakr and Umar are dead. He said, then it is so and so and so and so. They said, Qad ma'at fulan wa fulan. So and so are dead. They want to know who is the jama'ah now, who is alive, that we can go to, who are the people of truth. He said, in that case, the jama'ah, Abu Hamza al-Sukkari, al-Khurasani. He mentioned one of the great scholars of his era from Khurasan, from the borders of Iran and Afghanistan in that era. They are, he is the jama'ah. So who is the jama'ah today, my sisters? That you should associate yourselves with and cling to, but clinging to the truth, because of the truth that they're upon. Who are they? It is those very scholars that I've just mentioned. Salih al-Fawzan, Salih al-Luhidan, Rabi bin Hadi al-Madkhali, Zayd, Zayd al-Madkhali, Ubaid bin Abdullah al-Jabari, Muhammad ibn Hadi al-Madkhali, Abdullah bin Abdul Rahim al-Bukhari, Ali Nasr al-Faqihi, Ulama of the Sunnah, Ulama of Tamiz, establishing the Haq. Know them, acquaint yourselves with them, acquaint your children with them. These are the people of Sunnah, then those who ally themselves with them, those who cling to them because of the Haq that they carry. Hold on to the truth, my sisters. Hold on to the sunnah. Hold on to the truth. Just as Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he said, Usulu sunnati indana at tamasaku bima kana alayhi ashabu rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi sallam wal iqtida'u bihim. Ahmad bin Hanbal, the foundations of the sunnah with us is that which the Sahaba is to hold fast to that which the Sahaba of Allah's Messenger وسلم, were upon. And to follow them and to take them as a model and an example to be followed. These are the people of Sunnah. 
And the people of Sunnah in our times are small. So you, my sisters, are bound. And you are obligated to stick to the truth in a time when the people of Sunnah are few. Imam Sufyan al Thawri, rahimahullah ta'ala, who died in the year 161 after the Hijrah, he said, إِذَا بَلَغَ إِذَا بَلَغَكَ أَنْ رَجُلٍ بِالْمَشْرِقِ سَاهِبِ سَاهِبُ sunnah." He said, if you reach a man from the east who's a person of Sunnah, وَآخِرْ بِالْمَغْرِبِ And there's another one in the west. He said, then convey to him or convey to them my salam, or convey to them the salam. And make dua for them. For indeed, Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'a are few in number. And that was in that time. My sisters do not tolerate people speaking ill of our ulama. Sheikh Rabia, Sheikh Ubaid, Sheikh Al Fawzan, Sheikh Zaid, Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari. Sheikh Muhammad, don't allow people to be speaking ill of them in your company and you remain silent. Do you not fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you? That the people of truth and the jama'ah are being spoken ill of? Do not allow people to speak ill of the Salafiyun of this land. The Salafiyun in every place, do not allow them to be insulted and abused. Do not allow, do not sit with those individuals who speak ill of Ahlul Sunnah. Why? Because they are people of bid'ah. Where will you be? Yom al Qiyamah. When the angels are driving them away from the hold of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you are hoping, with all of your hope, with their life, you are hoping that you are not from those who are driven away. And then you think to yourselves, the people of Sunnah were being cursed and I did not stop it. The Salafis were being attacked and I did not stop it. I was listening to the people of Bid'ah, those about whom the Messenger of Allah said, the curse of Allah is upon the innovators. Rather, I was defending them. Are those angels going to come to me and prevent me? I need to drink. I am thirsty. I need to drink. Will those angels prevent me now? I was from those people who used to speak against the people of Sunnah. When they were being cursed, I allowed them to be cursed. When they were being reviled and insulted, I was there listening. I did not adhere to the Sunnah as I should have adhered to the Sunnah. Are those angels going to turn me away? I'm thirsty. I'm in terror. I need my Lord. Are they going to turn me away? Where's your istiqamah, my sisters, now? Put yourselves in that situation. Put yourselves in your grave. Shrouded. In your graves. Dark. Cold. Who's going to help you now? Are those angels there now for you? Did those angels give, me, give you the glad tidings? Do not fear and do not grieve. Was I given that? Am I worthy of that glad tiding? Because I was the one who said, that I was the one who said, from them who said, Rabbuna Allah thum, and then thumma staqamu. Then they were steadfast. Was I from them? And then those angels, they say, Nahnu awliya. That we were your awliya, we were your allies and your friends and your protectors in the life of this world. And likewise in the hereafter, am I from them? وَأَبْشِرُ بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَدُونَ This is where the sunnah takes you. Not bid'a. You have a masjid here. And you have marakis up and down the country. 20 years ago we had nothing. In this land we had nothing. Not a, sil- not a single salafi masjid. All we had was those ikhwanis claiming to be ahl al-hadith. 20 years ago, not a single masjid. Maybe a handful of Salafis in, in, in the big major cities. Bas. Maybe 15, 20 in Birmingham. 
maybe 15 or 20 in London, East London. A handful here, a handful there. Bas. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the efforts and because of the sincerity of a group of individuals, and I don't say that I am from them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me from them and I hope that I am from them. But when a group of individuals stood up upon istiqamah and they stood firm for this deen, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his blessings and from his grace and from his mercy, that 20 years later, in almost every major city we have a Salafi masjid and a markaz. However miskeen it may be, however poorly funded it may be, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of Salafis up and down the country now. So where are you with regard to that, my sisters? Are you with them or are you against them? Or are you like that fly that jumps from one plate, takes a bit, then jumps onto another plate, then takes another bit from there? Do not make your religion, my sisters, like the religion of the fly. The fly that takes a drop of food here and a drop of food there. Be settled that you are with the people of truth, inshallah. Be settled that you are with Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'a, with the Salafiyun, with Masjid the Salafi, and the rest of the Marakis, Al Atharia in East London, Al Basira, or Masjid the Sunnah in Bradford, Al Basira, and the rest of the Marakis and Masajid up and down the country, in Stoke, in Manchester, in Bradford, in West London, in East London. Alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed this da'wah. Why would you want to die upon anything other than that? What answer are you going to give to your Lord? How are you going to be in your grave? Man Rabbuk. Who is your Lord? Ma Deenuk. Man Nabiyuk. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? Who was your prophet? Were you a person, my sisters, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when you are standing? How are you going to face your Lord? When you were not with the people of Sunnah, are you going to be standing with the likes of Sufyan al Thawri and Ahmed bin Hanbal, Malik ibn Anas, Imam al Shafi'i, Ibn Taymiyyah, who are inshallah Ahlul Haq, Yawm al Qiyamah, as they were in this world? Who are you going to be standing with the Mubtadi'a, Jahm bin Safwan, Sayyid Qutb? Innovators, callers to misguidance, Bin Laden and those people. Muhammad Ilyas, the founder of Jamaat al Tabligh, Bahauddin Naqshband, from the, the founder of the Naqshbandi movement, Ahmad Raza Barelwi. Where are you going to be standing? With these enemies of Allah and these callers to misguidance? Or with those, the likes of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ibn Abbas and Ibn Mas'ud and Aisha and Um Salama and Um Habiba and Hafsa and Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun, the righteous. Who are you going to be standing with Yawm Al-Qiyamah? You think that this is just an affair of this dunya? That these are just brothers against brothers and masjid against masjid? This is a war between Haqq and Batil. Ahlul Sunnah are establishing a Furqan. Of the kitab and the sunnah. The criterion to distinguish between truth and falsehood. So the people of truth can be distinguished from the people of falsehood. Just as Allah will distinguish them. Yawm al-qiyamah. So be with the people of truth my sisters. Cling to it. With dear life. And don't flinch. Don't flinch. Don't be coward. Don't be made to feel weak. You are strong. Ahlul Sunnah are strong. Why? Because our knowledge is strong, inshallah. Our iman is strong, inshallah. Or we strive to make it strong at least. Because we obey our Lord and we follow our Messenger Muhammad. Alayhi salatu was salam. And we are upon the way of the Sahaba. Radiallahu anhum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our sins and forgive us our shortcomings. Accept our repentance and shower us with his mercy and enter us into the gardens of paradise under which rivers flow and guide us to the haqq, ourselves and our children and our families. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad.
وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم